Reference helps you get closer than ever to the sound of your favourite music. It does this by giving you the tools and insights you need to get your production sounding more like your reference tracks. In this walkthrough, I'll explain the features and show you how to get the most value from this incredibly powerful plugin. To get started, load an instance of Reference on the master bus of your project. Reference should go after your metering plugin. We recommend our comprehensive metering plugin levels, of course, but before any headphone or speaker correction. There are two ways to load reference tracks. You can either click Add Reference Tracks and select the files from your computer, or drag and drop your files onto the Wave Transport. After loading your reference tracks, you'll see the Mirror and Free buttons in the bottom left corner of the Wave Transport. When Free is activated, you can navigate to any part of your reference track by clicking on the waveform. Mirror will match the playback location of your reference to your DAW's transport. This is useful for when you have a different version of the same track you're working on and want to seamlessly jump between the versions at the same point in the song. You can create loops in free mode. To create a loop, select and drag over the part of the waveform you wish to loop. Loop endpoints are automatically shifted to the nearest beat. You can create as many loops as you want. After creating a loop, click anywhere within the loop to activate it. Adjust a loop by dragging the loop lines and delete it by clicking the cross. In the bottom right corner of the wave transport, you'll see the level match button. When selected, this will accurately match the perceived loudness of the track you're working on and your reference tracks. This is an absolutely crucial stage in comparing audio. Louder sounds give humans the illusion that they have a fuller bass and more clarity in the high frequencies. By level matching, you'll be able to compare the tracks fairly and make mixing decisions with confidence. The default option is to match your reference tracks to the volume of the original track you're working on. You can also match the loudness to the quietest track, whether it's the original or a reference track, to ensure safe headroom. The third option is to match all tracks to minus 14 LUFs short term, which is comparable to the loudness normalization found on popular music streaming sites. You also have control over whether you match the loudness of individual tracks or all tracks. Our recommendation is to keep level match turned on whilst you're working, set to match to original and all tracks, whether you're mixing or mastering. All gain adjustments will be represented by the gain slider. Be sure to turn off level matching when bouncing if you're using match to quietest or all to minus 14 short term LUFs, as this can alter the loudness of your original file. When you have different versions of the same mix or master, there can be slightly different lengths of silence at the beginning of the tracks. It can be annoying and time consuming when you have to line them up to jump between them seamlessly during referencing. The track align button does this laborious job for you in an instant, so you can spend your time getting your track sounding its best. If track align detects that you have loaded a reference track that is a different version of the track you're working on, for example, an alternate mix or master, the track align button will pop up in the bottom right corner of the wave transport. When you click track align, the selected reference will become aligned to the original track you're working on. If you have multiple versions of the same song, you can align them all in one action by selecting all tracks in the track align settings pop-up. Track align often works best when you play the original in your DAW from the beginning. You can also click reset to align when at any point in the original track. Very rarely the track align algorithm may detect an incorrect alignment. In this situation, just click reset or choose manual align. If you prefer to manually adjust the alignment, you can click manually align to open the sample slider. The slider direction works as if you are moving audio from within your DAW. Move the slider to the left to move your reference track forward and move it to the right to delay it. Click the mix button to preview both your original and reference at the same time. This can make it easier to line up the two tracks manually and click the cross to minimize the sample slider. The track tabs display the tracks you've loaded into reference. You can toggle between your different references by clicking on the tabs. Double click on a track tab to change the label. Click on the cross on a track tab to remove the selected file from reference. When the original button is selected, you'll hear the audio you're working on in your DAW. 
the Reference button will enable playback of whichever reference track is selected in the track tabs. The buttons are linked, so you don't have to move your mouse to switch from original to reference. The left arrow key toggles between original and reference, and you can change this to any key you like in settings. Both the original and reference buttons are linked to peak and loudness meters. For the peak meter, you can select true peak or peak program. And for the loudness meter, you can select LUFS integrated or short term. Click on the readouts or reset in the bottom left corner to reset the meters. The LUFS threshold can be adjusted to suit your preferences in settings. When creating a loudmaster, you might choose to set your LUFS threshold to around minus six short term and work on the loudest section of your track. If you're optimizing a master for streaming, you might choose to set the target to minus 14 LUFS integrated. Alternatively, you can line up your loudness with your reference track to get a comparable loudness. You can use the gain slider to adjust the gain of either the original or reference track. The gain slider has a default range of minus 48 decibels to plus 24 decibels. When using the level match feature, the gain of the tracks will be automatically adjusted in real time. You can see any gain increase or reduction on the gain slider. You can adjust the amount if you prefer, though manually adjusting the gain slider will disengage the level matching. To set the gain back to zero decibels, double click or alt click on the slider. Click the icon in the top right corner to jump between normal and compact mode. Click and drag the bottom right corner to change the width. When you listen to your reference track and you compare it to your own music, it can be difficult to put your finger on what changes you need to make. The Trinity display uses intelligent algorithms to show you how the frequency balance, stereo width, and punch of your track compares to your reference. The white level line tells you how the EQ balance of your original song differs from your reference track. The Trinity display has a thin, faint line through the middle. This represents zero decibels. The thicker white level line will move into the upper half of the Trinity display if the frequencies of your track have more perceived volume than the corresponding frequencies in your reference. The level line will descend into the lower half of the Trinity display if the frequencies have less perceived volume than the corresponding frequencies in your reference. When the level line is on the middle zero decibel line, the tonal balance is identical. With the level line visual, you can switch between EQ difference, the default that I've just explained, and EQ match. The EQ match setting inverts the level line to show you the exact EQ adjustment to make to get your original track sounding more like your reference. You can set your preference for EQ difference or EQ match in settings. What makes the level line completely unique and so useful? Trying to get your mix or master to match the frequency spectrum of a reference track simply will not work. This is because there are so many variables that affect how a track sounds, such as instruments, tuning, performance, samples, etc. The level line uses a complex algorithm created to specifically identify how the human ear perceives certain frequencies relative to the balance of the whole mix. Looking at this example, we can determine that around 0 to 200 hertz, our original track has less energy than our reference. This might prompt us to boost the volume of our bass or add a low frequency EQ boost to our kick. We can also see that from 200 to 2000 Hz, our original track has a similar amount of perceived volume to our reference, so we might not change this at all. Finally, we can see that from 2000 Hz to 20,000 Hz, our track has more perceived loudness than our reference we might decide to musically reduce the high frequency sticking out in our mix. Alternatively, we might decide that we like the clarity of our mix and leave the EQ balance as it is. The level line algorithm has three refresh modes, short, medium, and integrated. With the short refresh mode, the level line updates over a three second period based on how your current EQ balance compares with your reference. The medium refresh mode updates over 10 seconds. With both short and medium refresh modes, you don't need to click reset for the level line to reflect changes made to the EQ of your track. The third option, integrated, accumulates input analysis data constantly. This gives a more stable reading, but we advise that you click reset after any EQ changes made to your track.
you can select your level line refresh mode preference in settings. You can hover your mouse over the Trinity display to get specific decibel and hertz readouts. You can also control click to freeze a snapshot of the level line's current position and control click again to remove it. For the best results, use a reference track of the same sample rate as your session. If that's not possible, use a very good sample rate converter to convert the reference track to the sample rate of your session. The stereo width shows you how wide the audio is across the entire frequency range of either the original track you're working on or your reference. Understanding the stereo spread of both your original track and your reference will help you get closer to the sound you want. You can use panning in your DAW or a stereo tool to reduce or increase the width of a specific frequency range in your track. The punch dots in the Trinity display will tell you how the short-term dynamic range of your track compares to the short-term dynamic range of your reference. The punch dots will move towards the zero decibel line if that frequency range is more compressed in your original than in the corresponding frequency range of your reference. The punch dots will move away from the zero decibel line if that frequency range is less compressed in your original than in the corresponding frequency range of your reference. The more opaque the docks are, the larger the difference between the punch of your track and the punch of the reference. In the example here, we can see that the punch dots are moving towards the zero decibel line in the low end. This tells us that our original track has more compression in the low frequencies than the reference track. This might prompt us to reduce the compression on our kick or bass elements. We can also see that in the high end, the punch dots are moving away from the zero decibel line. This means that the high frequencies are punchier in our track than in the reference. We may decide to compress these transients using a multiband compressor. Or we might decide that we actually like the punchy top end and leave it just as it is. To solo part of the frequency spectrum, click anywhere inside the Trinity display. This will automatically create a band solo that you can move and adjust. Click once more to unsolo that band and listen to the whole mix again. And click the cross to delete the band. Soloing the bands is a great way to zone in on the intricate differences between your mix and your references. The Trinity display has four different scales, plus minus 5, 10, 15 and 20 decibels. By default, the range will automatically change to accommodate the level line readings. Each dotted line on the Trinity display represents one decibel. To change the scale manually to a broader or more magnified setting, click the plus minus numerical readouts in the bottom left or top left of the Trinity display. Manually adjusting the scale will turn the auto scale off and this can be switched back on in the settings. If you're mastering a track and you want to visually see the intricate changes you have made, then plus minus five decibels would be the most magnified setting. The Trinity display was designed so you can easily see all three visuals simultaneously but you can choose what visuals are enabled and disabled in the Trinity Display settings located just above the Trinity Display. Click Reset in the bottom left corner to reset all the Trinity Display data. RefSend is an additional plugin installed alongside Reference that allows you to send audio to Reference from within your DAW. This can be useful for when you want to hear the before and after effect of a plugin, an effects chain, or even your entire mastering chain. Load up an instance of RefSend in your DAW before the plugins that you want to A-B test. Ensure reference is instantiated after the plugins that you want to A-B test. Once RefSend is instantiated, you'll see a new track tab automatically appear labeled Reference Send. Select this track tab and toggle the original and reference buttons to A-B test. You can use all of Reference's tools and insights with RefSend, such as Level Match, Track Align, as well as the metering and all Trinity Display visuals. You can change the default settings of Reference to suit your workflow. Click the S icon in the top right corner, choose your preferred defaults, then click Save. You can also create and recall presets using the plugin wrapper in your DAW. When you create a preset, you'll be able to recall the reference tracks, the loops, the level match adjustments, and the Trinity display settings. We recommend creating presets categorized by the genres you work in. 
you can then quickly recall your favorite reference tracks with the loops already created. We hope you get a ton of value out of reference and that it helps you get closer than ever to the sound of your favorite tracks.